in a previous video, I talked about how every quotient group of G is a homomorphic image of G. I now want to show the other way around. Every homomorphic image of G is isomorphic to a quotient group of G. And when I do that, I have that the idea of a homomorphic image and a quotient group are interchangeable. So we can use the notions of a homomorphic image and a quotient group and interchange them freely. The first thing I need to show I'm going to let F go from G to H be a homomorphism with kernel K. Then F of A is equal to F of B if and only if the coset KA is equal to the coset KB. In other words, we say any two elements in G have the same image under F if and only if they are the same coset of K. Well, f of a is equal to f of b if and only if f of a f of b inverse is equal to e. To get from here to here, I multiply both sides by f of b inverse on the right. To get the other direction, we would multiply both sides by f of b on the right as well. Using the identity of a homomorphism, we have that that's true if and only if f of a b inverse is equal to the identity. By definition of the kernel, that means this is true if and only if a, b inverse is in the kernel. And we have the a, b inverse is in the kernel if and only if k, a is equal to k, b by something I've proven in a previous video. So this tells us that if f is some homomorphism from g to h with my kernel k, all of the elements in any fixed coset of k have the same image, and conversely, elements which have the same image are in the same coset of k. Here's a diagram that kind of shows what was happening in this theorem. For my domain, I'm going to break it up into cosets of the kernel. So this would be the kernel K. This is the coset Ka or Kb. This is the coset Kx, etc. And then when I apply my homomorphism, everything in the kernel maps to the same elements. Everything in this coset maps to the same element. Everything in this coset maps to the same element. So we're mapping entire cosets to a single element. This means there's a one-to-one -one correspondence matching between cosets of K and elements of H. So now I only need to show that this one-to-one -one correspondence is an isomorphism. First, I need to know how exactly does this correspondence match up specific so cosets of K with specific elements of H? Well, for every coset Kx, we're going to match it with the element f of x. We can now talk about the fundamental homomorphism theorem. The fundamental homomorphism theorem says if we let f go from g to h be a homomorphism of g onto h. So that tells us this is a surjective homomorphism. We are actually onto, we are a surjective homomorphism. Well, if k is the kernel of f, then h is isomorphic to g mod k. So let's go about showing this. Since we want to prove that these two things are isomorphic, we must look for an isomorphism from g mod k to h. Well, let's let phi be a function from g mod k to h, defined by phi of kx, the coset kx, equal to f of x. This definition does not make it obvious that phi of kx is uniquely defined. If it's not, then we can't even call this thing a function. In other words, we need to show that if Ka is equal to Kb, then f of A is equal to f of B. But that's in fact true by the theorem that I proved earlier in this video. Now that we have this function's well-defined, we need to show it's an isomorphism. Let's start by showing it's injective. Well, to show it's injective, we have phi of ka equal to phi of kb. That implies that f of a is equal to fb by definition of phi. 
And the theorem that I proved earlier in this video said that if f of a is equal to f of b, then ka is equal to kb, since that was an if and only a theorem. Therefore, we do have that this function phi is injective. To show it's surjective, every element of h is of the form f of x. Since my function f was onto, it was a surjective function, so every element of h can be written as f of x. By definition of my function, I then have phi of kx is equal to f of x, which then gives me its surjective. Finally, let's look at phi of ka times kb. Well, that's the same thing as phi of kab by definition of coset multiplication. Definition of phi tells me that this is f of ab. F was a homomorphism, so we know that f of a, f of b. And then, well, f of a is by definition phi of ka. f of b is phi of kb. And therefore, we have shown that this is an isomorphism. So what exactly does this mean? Well, we now know that every homomorphic image of G is isomorphic to a quotient group of G. Not only that, we can specify exactly what quotient group. If F is a function from G to H, then H is isomorphic to the quotient group of G by the kernel of F. So we can not only say that we know all of the homomorphic images of G, we can specify exactly what they are based on the kernel of my function f.